On the news, 40 bills at various stages in the House of Representatives for alteration of the Constitution. Promoters of this particular amendment will start their advocacy timely. Southwest speakers meet Oyo State Governor, push for cohesion on security. Give us that responsibility first and let us see if certain states will uh, be able to or not able to uh, uh, maintain it. Plus, Ogun State Assembly ratifies impeachment of Oluoma, swears in new speaker. My words are my bond. I shall support you with all my strength. A very good evening to you and welcome to Parliamentary News coming to you from Abuja, the nation's capital city. I am Amina Saidu. Improved collaboration on security, investment and trade between Nigeria and Germany were the matters that dominated discussion when the German ambassador to Nigeria, Annette Gunther, met with the president of Nigeria's Senate, Senator Godzu Apabio. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that Senator Apabio requested for adjustments in the electricity-related contract with the German company Siemens. It is a meeting between representatives of two nations in different continents, but with shared similarities. Nigeria and Germany are the largest economies and most populous nations in Africa and Europe, respectively. Relations between them date back decades. Nigeria is the second largest trade partner with Germany in sub-Saharan Africa, the latest being the Siemens contract to improve electricity supply in Nigeria. Senator Pabio says the terms of the contract should be adjusted. We believe that uh, the Simmons uh, deal is a good one, but how to make it work will be that it will not be good for them to only supply the equipment. We would like them to also be partakers in the in implementation, installing the equipment and supervising it before handing over to Nigeria. He also seeks assistance in curbing insecurity in Nigeria. If they stop listening to social media, uh, they, would have, uh, they will help most of the developing countries because the social media will be awash with, oh, if you give them to Kano helicopters, if you sell this to them, they will use it to wipe out uh, uh, civilians and all that. So, but on the whole, uh, this government is very determined to secure the nation. Arnett Gunter, the German ambassador to Nigeria, reaffirms the readiness of her country to provide intervention, which she says is already on the table. We're also together with UNDP, we want to um, establish something that we call prevention facility, because we think in the Northwest we can still uh, work with traditional uh, systems of conflict resolution with the communities, maybe it's not too late. Uh, so we want to come in with a stabilizing prevention facility and to work with the communities. Both sides also touched on enhanced collaboration between parliaments of Nigeria and Germany. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. President of the Senate, Godswe Akpagbu, has reassured people of the Niger Delta that completion of the East-West Road is a priority to the present administration in view of its economic importance. While hosting the acting president of the Supreme Council of Ogoni traditional rulers, Senator Akpavio notes that completion of the road will boost economic activities in the region and Nigeria, adding that government is open to explore all options to achieve objectives. I want to employ you to continue to plead with the youths, to cooperate with any company that comes there to add value, because it's not federal government that will pass on the road there. We are the ones to pass. It affects the economic life of the place. You have almost 50 industries around there, from the petrochemical all the way down to the depot, the depot, and of course the the port, the Oneb port, and all that, and the, and the free trade zone authority. So the wear and tear on the road is amazing, and it's something that uh, uh, must be done and done well. He appealed for sustenance of the prevailing peace in Ogoni land. The monarch expressed gratitude to Senator Opagwio and federal government for giving his people a sense of belonging. Meanwhile, 40 bills are presently at various stages of consideration in the House of Representatives towards alteration of the Constitution. 
Deputy Speaker of the House and Chairman House Committee on Constitution Review, Benjamin Kalu, stated this at a pre-inaugural meeting to draft a work plan. National Assembly correspondent Mitari Ekwen reports on this and other engagements in the House. Constitution review is usually at the front burner of legislative agenda and the 10th Assembly has the task of carrying out the sixth alteration of the 1999 Constitution as amended. The House Committee on Constitution Review is already drafting a work plan and engaging experts in the quest to revisit provisions of the Constitution that border on the security and welfare of citizens. The committee is fully aware of the concerns of Nigerians on the need to finalize and conclude discussions around Nigeria's Constitution. In the last Constitution Review, there were some key constitution amendment proposals that did not pass either because we did not fully understand their provisions an example was the proposal to create additional seat for women in federal and state legislative houses let us use this opportunity to understand this proposal hoping that those who are the promoters of this particular amendment will start their advocacy timely. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Customs has approved a budget of 706.4 billion naira for the Nigeria Customs Service for the 2024 fiscal year, with emphasis on fast-tracking e-customs operation to boost trade facilitation and revenue generation. We are eager to learn about the impact of this e-customs modernization, the number of scanners deployed and functional, and the integration of artificial intelligence in our border stations. We are also collaborating actively with other agencies of government that would help us reduce the smuggling of vehicles. The Nigeria Customs Service says it realized 3.2 trillion naira revenue in 2023 out of a projected target of 3.6 trillion naira. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikben. NTA News. Oyo State Governor Sheyi Makindi has pledged his support to the push towards regional legislative integration aimed at creating policy cohesion in security and good governance. The governor stated this when he received the Conference of Speakers of State Legislators Southwest. Correspondent Ayomiku Ajibola has details. Receiving members of the Conference of Speakers of State Legislature Southwest Oyo State Governor Sheyima Kede maintained that there is need for collaboration and cooperation between the executive arm of government and the legislature to enhance the delivery of dividends of democracy and bring development to the people of the region. Speaking on the recent security challenges in the country, particularly the southwest, the governor maintained that the establishment of state police is an idea which time has come and that the fear in some quarters that the state could not be able to maintain state police are unfounded. Give us that responsibility first and let us see if certain states will uh, be able to or not able to uh, uh, maintain it. Helia, Chairman Conference of Speakers of State Legislature, Southwest, Adioye Aribisoye, while disclosing that the Southwest Conference of Speakers had already commenced consultation with governors in the region, noted that the lawmakers were in a tripod admission to Oyo State, which include commiserating with the governor and the people of the state over the recent tragic incident of explosion that rocked Bodija area of Ibadan. We felt on our home that um, it is also time for us to discuss with our leaders, our governors, that there is the need again to strengthen the security architecture in the Southwest. The chairman equally proposed to host a regional legislative summit for lawmakers in Ibadan, being the political headquarters of the region, to equip lawmakers with requisite legislative skills for the tax ahead. In Ibadan, Ayomiku Ajibola, NTA News. Similarly, 22 members of the Ogun State House of Assembly have formally ratified the decision of the House to impeach the former Speaker Olakule Oluomo after receiving the report of an investigative panel that found the former Speaker guilty of all allegations leveled against him. 
the House at the plenary formally swore in Oludaisi Elemide as the new speaker in line with the extant law of the House. Correspondent Yemi Dalemo completes the report. The chairman of the eight-man panel of inquiries gave the former speaker fair airing after serving him the impeachment notice signed by the 18 lawmakers. Honorable Musefiu Lamidi, while briefing the House on the outcome of the assignment, said the former speaker Oluomo displayed arrogance and high addedness while appearing before the committee to defend himself. And after the hearing, the investigative panel found Oluomo guilty of all the allegations leveled against him and recommended his removal as Speaker of the House of Assembly. He therefore moved the motion for the adoption of the report, which was seconded by a member representing Ijebu North East constituency, Olusheun Adesonya. Deputy Speaker Ladifat Bolanli Ajayi, who presided over the plenary, threw the resolution back to the House and the 22 members in attendance affirmed the removal of Oluomo as the Speaker through a majority vote. The majority vote of 22 members are hereby confirmed that Right Honorable Lakunle Oluomo stand in peace and removed as the Speaker of this Honorable House of the State House of Assembly. <laughs> Members thereafter nominated Oluda Isi Elemide, who was thereafter sworn in as the new Speaker to replace the former Speaker. My words are my bond. I shall support you with all my strength. We will collaborate with you to achieve our Ishaya mantra. Elemide promised an all-inclusive leadership urging the members to see themselves as one and work in unity for the progress of Ogun State. In Apeokuta, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. It's now time for a break. When we return, Ekiti State Assembly passes resolution for a multi-level policing architecture in the state. Stay with us. Are you looking for a short channel to make your business, goods and services go viral? Look no further as NTA Parliament is your short channel. Take advantage of our wider reach and advertise your products and services on NTA Parliament DSTV channel 370, Go TV channel 126, Star Times channel 306, and Free TV channel 706. For more inquiries, contact the marketing department NTA Parliament, NTA Headquarters Area 11 Gerki Abuja, or call these numbers 080. 383-40464 or 080-770-78055. NTA Parliament, strengthening Nigeria's democracy. Welcome back. Speaker Nasra State House of Assembly and Ladi Jato says legislators will work in collaboration with Nigerian governors forum for the full implementation of legislative financial autonomy. This was brought to the fore when the National President of Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, Pasan Comrade Mohammed Usman, paid the Speaker a familiarization visit. Adams Abdul Adar tells us more. It could be recalled that the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria Pansan embarked on nationwide strike last year, among other things, for the governors to commence immediate implementation of financial autonomy for state assemblies in line with the Constitution. Their demand is here to see the light of the day, despite the suspension of the industrial action that lasted several weeks. Against this backdrop, National President of Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria Pansan, Comrade Mohammed Usman, commended Nasrallah State Assembly for the great feats achieved in few weeks in office. It is our own right, as it is enshrined in the Constitution, that the autonomy of the legislature is sacrosanct. So we as a union, we are not backing down on it, and that was why we went for the strike, demanding for it. To God be the glory, there was a tripartite meeting between the Governor's Forum and the Speaker's Forum, which we have gotten to a state. And I believe that Nasarawa State House of Assembly, I'm saying it without missing what, not because you are here, Nasarawa State House of Assembly is the first that had almost, almost if not, completed that agreement. Speaker Danladi Jatu, who strongly believes in their struggle for democracy, says 
separation of power is paramount. He assured them that the legislative arm of government will support efforts for the full independence of state assemblies. If it comes to their welfare, they will go to any length if it comes to their welfare. Because I have the belief when staff are motivated, they put in their best. Dad, I'm assuring you. In another development, Speaker Danladi Jato also hosted the Forum of Youths, Ethnic Nationalities in Nasarawa State, where issues of unity and insecurity like dominated their engagement. In Lafia, Adams Abdikadri, NTA News. Ekiti State House of Assembly has passed a resolution calling for multi-level policing and improved security architecture to urgently address the menace of insecurity in the state. The House also passed a resolution calling for prompt rescue of the kidnapped school children and their teachers in Eporo Ekiti. The resolution followed the recent killing of two traditional rulers and the kidnap of school children in the state. Ayodeji Ogunsaki has details. It was a special and emergency plenary as lawmakers appeared in black outfits to reflect the sad incidents which rocked the state following the recent killing of two traditional rulers and kidnap of school children and their teachers in the state. Section of the standing order of the house was evoked as the plenary was dissolved to the committee of the whole to allow the presentation by stakeholders from the affected local government area equally and adjoining local council development areas as well as other key players. Chief Operating Officer of the Amotekun Corps in Ekiti State, Ajayi Adiru Timi, explained the activities of the security network and warned the Assembly to intervene in their demands to effectively carry out their duties. Chairman Ajoni Local Council Development Area, Michael Ogunbemi, briefed the House on the Security Network Initiative of the Local Council Area to support official security personnel in communities. He solicited the state government's support in fortifying the border communities and regular forest combing by combined security forces of both official and local security networks. Members, including leader of government business, Toluigi, Alaja Miriam Mugunlade representing Emory Constancy, Femi Fatunla representing Ikole Constancy One, and Tope Lunge representing Oye Constancy One condemned the two incidents and called for proactive measures and redesigned security architecture to safeguard the state from such security threats. With the contributions by members, the House passed resolutions calling on stakeholders to adopt a comprehensive approach to addressing security issues, why security agencies in the state should take immediate steps to ensure the prompt rescue of the kidnapped students and their teachers. The House also recommends that the Nigerian Air Force commence operations in Ekiti State to enhance surveillance and intelligence gathering to support the activities of other security agencies, why the operational capability of the state Amotekun Corps should be strengthened. Operations to enhance surveillance and intelligence gathering that supports the activities of other security agencies. If you are in support that these resolutions as contained in 1 to 10, four part of our resolution today say hi. The same day, the hi is it. The House acknowledged the intervention of President Bola Tinubu and the State Governor, Biodun Oyibanji, on the recent insecurity in the state. From the State House of Assembly, Ayodi Jogunshakin, NCA News. The Cross River State House of Assembly, as a matter of urgent public importance, has called on the state government to provide portable water and the needed health education in Obubra local government area to forestall outbreak of Lassa fever. Udwak Etim reports that this was part of resolutions reached during plenary. Following the outbreak of Lhasa fever in a Jack community, Obubra local government area, the Cross River State House of Assembly deliberated on proactive steps to be taken by the state government towards tackling the outbreak and other related diseases like cholera. The motion moved by member representing Obubra 1 state constituency, Ovat Agwo, was supported by other members on the resolution reached that the state government should provide portable drinking water and needed health education to ensure sanitation and basic hygiene in the area to forestall future resurgence of the outbreak. Thank you. 
On the fact that the State Minister of Health is doing its best to curb the spread of the virus, environmental sanitation and regular hand washing are being advocated as ways to forestall future outbreak. In Calabar, Udwak Etan, NTN News. Still in Cross River, the State Electricity Board Bill 2024 has passed second reading on the floor of the State House of Assembly. Again, Udwak Etim tells us more. It would be recalled that President Bola Tinubu had in 2023 assented to the electricity bill which authorizes states to generate, transmit and distribute electricity. This new act by the president consolidates all legislations in electricity supply while encouraging private investment in the industry. Now, the Cross River State House of Assembly during plenary commended the federal government for the gesture calling for speedy passage of the Cross River State Electricity Board Bill. Sponsor of the bill and member representing ECOM 1 State Constituency, Samuel Abang, and other members enumerated benefits of the bill when passed into law. If eventually this board, even set up by the state government, to assist the state government, or also getting the revenue and allowing other competitors, also coming. I want to also lend my support to it that this bill should be given to speed in passage. The speaker, electricity is life to the economy of any country. Without electricity, no business can be done. Mr. Speaker, I'm being listening carefully to all the comments from our dear colleagues here present today. I stand to pledge. This can give this uh, bill the speedy passage. The additional fact that even cross river states have the potential of even generating electricity. I want to align quickly with all the my colleagues that have contributed on this uh, bill that we, without any delay, Speaker of the State House of Assembly commended the sponsor of the bill, noting that it will create markets for renewable energy and stimulate investment. The Cross River State Electricity Board Bill 2024 has been read the second time. This bill is served by committed to, to a committee on power, so you can come up with a report on this bill. In Calabar, Udwak Etam, NTN News. The International Association of World Peace Advocates has conferred an award of eminent peace ambassador and global diplomat on Dr. Augustine Uwaluni. This is in recognition of his contributions to humanity and growth of mankind in the Nigerian society. Joshua Ogunjidi was at the occasion and files this report. Not just an award, but an appointment as Reverend Dr. Augustine Nwalune joins the League of Universal Champions of Peace. The core mandate of the International Association of World Peace Advocates is to ensure peace and sustainable development through promotion of the United Nations idea of volunteers around the world. When we study his character from the primary to secondary to university and his works during his civil service, we realize that this man is a peaceful man. The world is in need of uh, peacemakers. The world, you can see the crisis all over. And uh, unfortunately, not many people are committed to the process of peacemaking. He has done so well, particularly in Europe, providing politics to his community, and at the same time, touching the life of the widows and orphanage within and outside his area of work. Staunch, very, very believing child of God, a man of God. Yet, he relates to every kind of sort of the society. I pick him as a friend, a friend that can say one thing and he does it. 
It is a blessing to us. Five invitations from the UN awaits the newly inducted eminent peace ambassador between now and September 2024. Before I became inducted here into this association, I have been a person of peace. Uh, I am the group president of a great new Pentecost assembly uh, whose uh, vision is to restore peace to the alien world. So peace is what I preach and peace is what I am. All the while he has been working with NCC, it has always been that movement, movement that have always been at the home front, taking care of the children and everything and also supporting prayerfully and morally. So it's not a big deal. He has always been a man that is called to serve right from the ascension of the marriage. Dr. Augustin Nwalune, a retired director of Nigeria Communications Commission, is a qualified telecommunication engineer, group president of Great New Pentecost Assembly, a philanthropist and fellow of several other professional bodies. He is currently the vice chairman of Radio Communications Advisory Group. In Abuja, Joshua Okujiri, NT News. And that's the size of our package this evening, but you can still watch our news and other programs on our social media handles scrolling on your screen. Thank you for watching and do have a wonderful evening. I'm Amina Saidu.